Today we're here to talk about decorating with vintage items that you might not necessarily think of to use as room decor. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on getting size right, colors, and that sort of thing. So come with me and let's get started. So normally when you decorate a room, you buy your big pieces in the style that you like, whether it's contemporary, traditional, maybe it's farmhouse modern, maybe it's um, shabby chic, whatever your style is, your main pieces will be in that style. Now in here, I have like timeless pieces. This couch has timeless lines, so it can go with a modern look, a farmhouse look, or in my case, a vintage look. The same thing with the green chairs on this side. They have that classic wing back look to them. So they will go with any decor that I decide to pair. Now my tables, now with my tables, both this one and this one, those are both vintage from the 50s and that my husband refinished these a few years ago. So I've thrown in that little upset to the decorating gods, probably, because I am mixing my big pieces. I have basically very traditional couch and chairs mixed in with some 50s tables. But the reason I like to do this is because it gives more interest in my room. When you walk into this room, the first thing you notice are these tables. Now. If your furniture is all of one, like contemporary, modern, whatever, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. It just, if you like to do something and go against every decorating book there is, mix up your big pieces too. But today we're here to talk about little pieces and little tricks and tips and using something different. And first we're gonna talk about space. This is a long coffee table. So to have something on it, it needs to be pretty bulky and, you know, have some mass to it. Because if I put something small on this table, it's just going to look odd and lost. And I went ahead and stuck with the same period as the table for my decor on top. You can, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Totally up to you. What I've used on this table is a tray from the 50s and the aluminum cups that they used to have with a pouring pitcher. It fits, it gives it some interest, and again, it just highlights that my table is a, a vintage table. But I promised you unusual decor, and that's what we're going to talk about now. Again, it can be the same period as your tables, it can be different. If Say I had uh, traditional tables in here along with the traditional couch and chairs, but I still wanted to do 50s decor. I'm going to show you some really cool things you can add that you might not think of adding that really sets it apart. And if somebody walked in here, they would know you have a vintage 50s vibe going on or a Victorian vibe or whatever it is. So on the table here, I have some fun pieces. This is a vintage dish from the 50s, and I filled it with nature, pine cones that I put, painted gold. That way I'm bringing in some natural elements, but I'm still keeping my 50s theme going. Something different I'm using are some vintage 50s actual glasses that somebody wore. I thought they had a lot of interest. I love their lines. I love the details on them. It, it adds texture. And I just set them on the table like somebody set them down and walked off. And that's something cool that you can use. You can use eyeglasses to decorate with. Then I also have a little statue and a bronze shoe. Again, these things add interest. They're going to make people say, oh, whose shoe is that? Now, if you buy it at a, um, if you buy the shoe, if you buy bronze shoes at, say, an antique store, thrift store, whatever, you obviously don't know whose shoes they are. But, you know, make a story up, guys. Come on. 
add some fun to it. You know, you can tell them, you know, oh, I don't know whose it is, but I imagine it to be Abraham Lincoln's baby shoes or whatever. Okay, so this is one way to decorate. And you notice I do have varying heights because you do want to vary the heights when you decorate your tables. Now, something else interesting that you could decorate with that is vintage. On this table, I have used a vintage casserole dish from the 50s as decor because it's that turquoise blue. It brings in another color. It goes with this uh, poodle statue that I also found that is vintage. And then I pulled something in from my childhood. This was a vase that was given to my mom when I was born in the 60s. So I add that. And then I have my candlesticks and my lamp for height. And my poodle adds height. And I have it balanced out with my um, casserole dish. It doesn't have to be a candy dish. It can be a casserole dish. And if you look at the... Um, dishes from the 50s, 60s, whatever your time period is, even if it's Victorian, look at them not for what they were meant to be, but for their color and for their shape. What elements are they adding to your decor? This one adds a pop of color and it adds a unique shape to it. Underneath this table, again, I'm using a casserole dish because it adds a lot of interest, the lines. The color ties into the other one, and it's just a beautiful piece. But instead of pairing it with another vintage piece, I've actually paired it with this heavy thinker statue, which is modern. Now, using the vintage for parts of the furniture and for most of the knickknacks in the room, I've kind of come back to a traditional to go with the wingback chairs and the couch, and I'm using this just dark photo of flowers, which is very traditional, very heavy. It anchors this wall. This wall is a long, light wall, and it needed an anchor. This anchors the sitting area as well. It ties my traditional pieces into the room, more with all the vintage and yeah it kind of finishes your room now other things you could add would be a big mirror because mirrors always always add to a room in this case i have my mirror on this wall because it's pulling light in from the other room remember mirrors will bounce light and make your room look bigger and i have a video on that which i will tag above now i've brought you into my tv room and this is a modern, inexpensive TV cabinet that we picked up, along with the bookshelves on either side, which you can see this one is just a plain, I think, Wayfair bookshelf or Walmart bookshelf. Again, they're dark because the room is light. They're anchoring the wall on this side, and so the TV wouldn't stand out as a big black blob. But what I want to talk about is how I've gone in and mixed vintage onto a piece of basically contemporary furniture. And what I've done is I've kind of used symmetry in this. I'm balanced it out on each side of the TV box things. I have a vintage poodle, I have a vintage ashtray, and a vintage poodle light. On this side, I have a newer dog that barks, and my dogs love this thing. I have another vintage ashtray and another vintage light. And I'm mixing the modern with the vintage, but it works and it's very, when you come in, it's very balanced, so it doesn't throw you off in any way whatsoever. Now, if you look at this table, okay, if you look at, if you look at this table, it's a vintage table, it has a vintage light and vintage decor on it. And that's fine. You could mix it up, though, if you didn't like so much vintage or contemporary or whatever. You could have a contemporary table with no decor and a contemporary light. Okay, so this, this translates to whatever your decorating style may be. But if it's too much for you, maybe you have contemporary, but you want to throw in something a little different, throw in a metal light. You can mix your metals, you can mix your woods, guys. Remember that. Throw in a light with some metal on it, a brass light or a um, glass light, okay? If you wanted to mix it up a little bit more, 
throw in a vintage light on a contemporary table and make people really go, oh wow, I like that, but they won't know why they like it. When you change things up on people, they catch it, but they might not be sure what you're doing and they're gonna think you're a genius. And remember I talked about using unusual items for decor? Here we have a photo album of some sightseeing my husband and I did. And here is a book about the uh, mission. And then here's a coffee table book with pictures from Yosemite. And whether these books are old like this one, new like this, or a personal one, I think to offset them or to complement them, I've used these old vintage Kodak film canisters. How cool is that addition to put on your coffee table by your coffee table books, which are most of the time photos. So see, you can tie in really unusual things and they become very interesting. They become something that as your guests come in, they're gonna notice and say, oh, cool. And then you're gonna start conversations. So this is a great way to get conversations going, to learn something, you know. Think outside the box. Don't always think books or knickknacks. Think eyeglasses. Uh, film canisters, think boxes, think, um, think stuffed animals, think cards, think jewelry. Jewelry is another great thing. So jewelry is another interesting thing you can use as a tchotchke in your home. Again, it will spark interest, maybe memories, start conversations. Who knows, it could create somebody to go start a jewelry business or, you know, who knows. But anyway, what I've done here is I've put some vintage brooches in a box to display them and people see them when they come in. Also up here, I have some of my grandmother's vintage pins, which again will start spark conversation. Now you can't see the pins laying up here, but you see the ones that I have standing up and people will walk over to these, look at them and then pick up the other ones that are sitting up there. So it's just a great way to like I said, trigger conversations, trigger memories, make people happy. It can also make people sad at times, but you know, sometimes being sad is good too. The last thing, again, I want to show you. Okay, we have another vintage tape. Okay, we have another vintage table with a vintage lamp, some tall cats, Siamese cats, some little cats. And then we have a very modern piece in the corner right here, which again is unexpected, but it has a story. And my husband got this for one of our anniversaries. And so it, it triggers memories. Again, people will ask questions. Oh, I noticed everything on this table is vintage except for this piece. What is up with this piece? Why is it special? Because obviously if something's modern and out in my home, it has to be special because everything's vintage. But that's my style. Use your style. You could do this with modern and shabby chic. You could do this with farmhouse and a uh, French provincial. I mean, you can mix styles if you have a love of two and your spouse only has a love of one, take the one that you love that is pleasantly, you know. So take the one that you both like or the one that doesn't offend either, either person that much, make that your big and then add in little hints of the other one you love. I guarantee your spouse will not get upset with that kind of compromise. So I hope you enjoyed the video today about how to use unusual items to decorate your home because you can really save some money and start those conversations. Add that texture, add that dimension, add that little something that when people walk into your house, they don't know what it is, but they think you're an amazing decorator. Thanks for being here today, guys. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Take care.